So what's been happening in St. Jude since the last protest? We followed the black minivan, Dodge minivan, all the way back to Montreal. We were hoping it was the Radiers, somebody of the Radier family in that minivan, but it wasn't. Turns out we followed this minivan all the way to Montreal, and they pulled into the SQ parking lot with passes. They waved at us as we were waving back, and uh, it makes us wonder, what is the SQ sending folks from Montreal all the way to St. Jude? Why can't the local SQ of St. Jude use their cameras and get into their unmarked vehicles and do whatever these guys from Montreal were doing? makes me wonder what kind of technology from Montreal that St. Jude needed because my logic is they wouldn't send Montreal SQ agents to St. Jude just to come and take pictures. Even for profiling reasons, they can send these pictures back to Montreal headquarters. They wouldn't need to send somebody, two people, three people perhaps out of the van. We can confirm two in the van, most likely a third person. And uh, we're assuming they were probably listening to audio. So that makes me think that local communication, even in person, is not safe. A lot of people on Facebook didn't want to speak. They wanted to wait till the protest to meet in person and to discuss sensitive issues. That makes me assume that the SQ was listening into these conversations. So do they have a warrant for this? Do they not have a warrant? It's hard to say. Because of the liberation that took place uh, before the first protest, when the cages were opened in St. Jude by these so-called criminals, because the SQ has an open investigation, we're possibly left to assume that they're just investigating the liberation. It's interesting that they're investigating this liberation a lot more than they did the Vachon farm, which included a... I'll not name her in this video, but... Why is the SQ putting all their energy on this liberation and not the old one? Don't know, but what we've noticed is that Frédéric, who jumped into the pig pen at the pig festival, was wearing an ALF logo. So this week, the SQ went to go see Fred and gave him a warning to spread out to the activists he may know not to go into the farm properties because the farmers, fur farmers, have been uh, putting uh, bear traps and whatnot. Uh, here, the little blink is back with us. So, they went to Fred asking him to spread the message to the current activists that... Uh, the fur farmers were putting bear traps and booby traps and whatnot onto their properties because now the fur farming community is really freaked out because of the liberation that took place in St. Jude where the cages were opened. So now the fur farmers are petrified and putting, taking the law into their own hands by booby trapping their lands. However, at a civil liability, that could bite the farmers in the ass. So there are options and various plans that are being discussed as to how may we attack the system. Did the SQ fail to discharge of a legal duty by not enforcing the criminal code and dealing with the neglect at the fur farm, therefore their inaction causing activists to go in there, and is the SPCA at fault for releasing the name 
of Jean-Luc Rodier before there was an actual court case because currently they're claiming they can't talk about the procedures and na 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 what are their next plans because it's all confidential. What about Jean-Luc Radier's name? Why was in that confidential whatever happened to innocent until proven guilty? So those are some options that we're reviewing. The SPCA doesn't want a private lawyer to do a private prosecution towards the Radiers because it may not result in a seizure. And unfortunately, my advice on that is that's not how you build strong laws and jurisprudences because the more complaints, the more charges, the more heavier his file is, it will bite him in the ass. So we might not be able to seize this round with private prosecution, but we can definitely lay criminal charges and hopefully find him having been found guilty of this neglect. And uh, from there on, we're going to see what can happen. The SPCA is not willing to do really much of a fight. They're willing to fight it at the administrative law which means a civil court case against the ministry. Now, they've laid criminal charges on the Radier, but the Crown has not accepted the charges as of currently. That is why they went to the ministry. There's many reasons why they went to the Fauna Ministry for their various inspections. They went originally for a warrant they saw the judge, the judge awarded them a warrant, and they go in there with inspectors and they take video. The video that's been released that has those copyrights, she's an ex-liberator. Then we have the original video footage that dates back to about three to five months ago, before the SPCA got involved. Another liberator activist went in there and took video. So we've got liberators going in there, getting video. Then we've got the SPCA getting a warrant, sending another liberator to take more video. Now the conditions are exposed. Did the SPCA really know that nothing would happen? It was a futile battle against the ministry and against the Radiers. I mean, we've traced back the Radier line all the way to past the 1800s. I won't go as far. And um, they arrived in St. Jude in 1920. They come from a line of fur farmers that have been fur farming since the 1800s in Quebec, which was the New France, La Nouvelle France at the time. You've got two large-scale farmers in St. Jude. You had Radier of the Radier fur family, and you had Desmet, who is also a long line of fur farmers. 